Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Growing Developer. In this video, we're gonna learn about how we can build this beautiful UI. Let me just show you the UI. So this will be the UI that we'll be uh, making in this video. And couple of things uh, before starting. I've created a folder name, uh, named as fonts and inside this I have three circular fonts. And after that, I've created an images folder. Inside this, I have this image. Which I'll, use, uh, which I'll be using for the album art, right? And similarly, you have to go to your pubspec.yaml and refer to these assets and fonts respectively, right? So I have a colors.dart file and inside that I have created two colors, namely primary color and dark primary color. Dark primary color will be more kind of like the shadow color that uh, we have. So that's all, that's the prerequisite that you all need. And that's all you uh, need to add. I'll be adding all the stuff in my GitHub repo or as well as in the description also. So you go check the link there and uh, let's start the coding part. The Growing Developer. Inside this material app, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna first set the default font for our whole application. So for that, for the theme parameter as a theme data, I'll set the family font family as circular. Using this, all the all my application will be using the same circular font that I have just added in the pubspec.yaml file. Let me just set the debug show check mode banner property as false because I don't want this banner to be displayed. Now we start this app, and you can see that we have just a plain scaffold white screen now let's start designing our application of this now for the background color I'll set it as primary color as you can see that the primary color is the color that we are needed and you can see all the in the background also so there you go we have the primary color setup now for the body we'll be passing a column because you can see that we have to arrange it in the vertical manner and as children First one will be our navigation bar, right? For the navigation bar, go to your lab, uh, create a new file and name it as navbar. Now inside this, quickly import the material package, create a stateless widget and name it as, what do you name it as? And name it as navbar. Now inside this as container what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a height of 90 pixels and the alignment to be dot bottom center. Why I'm aligning it to bottom center because see uh, if we are not declaring any app bar to our application so this space goes unattended. So for that I want the container to shift to this much height and towards this bottom area I want the nav bar to be situated right. So as a child to it, so as a child to it, I'll pass a row and inside this children property, I'm going to pass a navbar item. Don't worry, this navbar item is yet to be made. So we'll make it. And after that, we have a text widget. Inside this, let us see what is written playing now, right? So inside this, we'll write playing now. After that, we have another navbar item. Right. So by neighbor item, I mean this, uh, these containers. So let's quickly make a neighbor item inside this file only will not create another file for that. I don't want the number of files to be increased. Right. So let's quickly make another stateless widget and name it as neighbor item. And it is showing this white line. Why? Because it want uh, because it wants us to follow the camel case. So let's just convert this small b to capital B and here also. Right. Because flutter reads nav as another word and bar as another word. So that's how we follow the upper camel case, right? So inside this container, I'm going to give it a height of 40 and width of 40. You can play with the height and width as you wish. Uh, it's totally your choice. And for the decoration part, I'm going to give it a color of primary color. And then for the radius 
for the border radius i'm gonna give it a radius circular of maybe 10 pixels why i'm giving it a circular radius because you can see that we have some curved edges to this container not a uh, and not an exact square so after that what i'm gonna do is as a child i'm gonna give it an icon now you can see a red line in icon because we haven't declared any icon to this so let's quickly declare an icon so we'll write final icon data icon now why i'm using this let's create a constructor for it there you go so we'll be passing the icon from the navbar class and then it will be you know easy for us to manage both the neighbor we can reuse this neighbor item and again and again now for this icon the color will be the dark primary color that we have so there you go looks better looks good right so for the shadow property you can see that this has some shadow also so let me just quickly show you what we have got and then we'll move on to the shadow part. okay so where it is that we have named navigation bar here and inside this we have named it as navbar. bar so let's change it to navigation bar right and inside this main dot art let's import this navigation bar there you go uh, now it's well and good let's save it and see what happens now you can see that we have playing now and we don't have any containers here why because we haven't yet passed the icons from above so what we're going to do is for the first navigation bar, I'm going to pass an icon of arrow back iOS and for and then for the second navbar item, I'm going to pass an icon of icons, maybe list. Yes, now save it and you can see that we have two containers here. Why we can't see the containers properly because we haven't given any shadows to it and uh, the colors are exactly same as the background color so that's why we can't see it so let's quickly uh, add some shadow to this containers so let me just reformat this code so that it is more uh, organized and inside this box decoration we have the box shadow property and this box shadow takes up a list of items for the box shadows for the first box shadow i'm gonna give it a color of dark primary color and then the offset would be uh, from the x-axis it will be 5 and from the y-axis it will be 10 pixels that is I want the shadow to shift 10 pixels downwards so after this offset I'm gonna give it a spread radius of 3 and a blur radius of 10 now save it and you can see that we have some cool shadow going on so this color is pretty dark here so let me just give it an opacity of maybe 0 0.5 there you go looks much better and now let's see the ui and you can see that we have the white shadow also so let's add the white shadow to this box shadow another box shadow and for the color i'll pass a white color and then for the offset part it would be like i want the shadow to move upwards as well as uh, towards the left side so for the x-axis I'm gonna give it a value of minus 3 and for the y-axis I'm gonna give it a value of minus 4 for the spread radius also I don't want it to be spread out so it will be minus 2 at the blur radius of course would be kind of 20 save it and now you can see that we have the white shadow so after that you can see that we want some spacing between them so what we're going to do is for the row i'll give it a main axis alignment of space between and you can see that these are evenly spaced and for the container part i'm going to give it a margin of uh, from symmetric horizontal 20. that is i want the uh, row to be shifted 20 pixels towards the center right and now this text is pretty small and it is not even black Let's see the ui so you can see that it is pretty big and it is of color the dark primary color so we're gonna style the text for the size it would be uh, 16 maybe the color would be dark primary color and the weight right so the weight i'm gonna pass is maybe w500 that is 500 weight 
save it and looks much better much cooler right uh, now let's move forward and see what we can do after this navigation bar we have our album art right so for that I'm gonna give a container and as this container I'm gonna give it a height of maybe height divided by 2.5 so let's so let's just quickly declare this height variable so inside this build function I'm gonna declare a double height equals to media query dot of dot size dot height this I'll get the height of the device and why am I giving it a height because you can see that we have some more album arts also so we'll be using a list view builder for that now list view builder when given horizontal axis as the scroll direction needs to be constrained within some container right I'll show you so add the child to this container what I'm gonna pass I'm gonna pass a list view dot builder inside this as item builder it will become text and the second parameter it takes is index and then from here I'm gonna pass album art Right, this album art is yet to be created don't worry we'll create it right now so for the item count it will be three that is we want uh, we are just replicating this ui right now so for the simplicity purpose i'm taking three item counts so one this and two others now after that what else do we have we have the scroll direction by default it has the scroll direction of vertical axis so we're going to change it to axis dot horizontal this way I'll be forcing my list view to expand to horizontal axis right so that's it now let's quickly make the album art inside this lib only we can, we're gonna make an album art uh, file now quickly import the material package and create a stateless widget name it as album art and let's quickly import it from here also there you go now inside this what I'm gonna do is for the height part I'm gonna give it a height of 250 or 260 I'm sticking with 260 why I'm sticking with 260 because I've played with this height and width before so by from this device I'll be sticking with these heights and widths you can play with the height and width uh, according to devices you can also use the height and width property of the media query to get the exact heights and widths so I'll be sticking with these static values right now so for the margin I'll be giving it a margin of symmetric and from the horizontal it will be like 20 and from the vertical it will be 40 now why I am taking these values let me just show you the UI first you can see that between these containers the album art is this container only i want a padding of 20 pixels from the other two containers that's why i've used the margin of 20 pixels from the horizontal axis and you can see that we have some padding from the top as well as the bottom that's why i used 40 pixels as the padding to this container now as a child what i'm going to do is image dot asset asset and as a name I will be passing images slash img dot png the image is right inside this images folder you can see that the name is img dot png so that's it I guess let's save it and see what happens there you can see that we have the containers we have some margin of 20 pixels and uh, 40 pixels from the vertical axis now we don't have any shadow effect and we don't have the outer container anyways right so let's have uh, so let's quickly add some shadow to our container so for the decoration part i'll be passing the color as the primary color don't forget to pass the color property as well because by default container has transparent color so it will not have any color so the shadow will be visible through the container so I always suggest to give color to the container if you are adding any kind of shadow to it so for the shadow part it will be same right uh, so let's quickly go to neighbor item and copy the shadows from here I'll copy these shadows and paste it here 
Now you must be thinking that why am I copying the shadow again and again? I could I could have made another separate list and declared the shadows inside it. Why? Because the shadows are not constant uh, among all the widgets. As you can see that we have more shadow towards right side here, and the spirit is more in this case. So we definitely want shadows to be different for a uh, for different widgets. So in this case, let me just save it and see what happens. There you go. You can see that we have the shadow effect, but it is not how we want. So let's increase the blur radius to maybe 25, and the spread radius let it be three only. And for the offset, this time the shadow is tilted towards the horizontal axis more, right? So it will be 20 here. And for the y axis, I'll stick with maybe eight, and save it. You can see that we have the shadow here. So I don't want this opacity to be here because right now I want the shadow to be more. Uh, so let's save it and there you go you can see that we have the prominent shadow effect going on for us now next thing would be to shape our album art so for that what we're gonna do is inside this for the border radius i'm gonna pass dot circular very circular and give it a radius of maybe uh, 20 save it and there you go you can see that we have our circular album containers you can see that we have some padding here but we haven't yet provided the padding so why are we getting these padding because the image is not taking up the entire space so to force it let us just give it a fit property of box dot fill now if it fill it now you can see that the image is taking up the entire space even if our container is curved from behind the image is still holding the box size so for that what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this image with a clip our rect widget always remember that image will still persist it's a box size so for that we have to wrap it with the clip our rect so border radius circular 20 now you can see that we have our images curved now we need some padding between the down container and the upper image so for that what we're gonna do is if you're gonna give it a padding of 12 pixels from all the sides and you can see that we have the padding going on and our album art is done right let's move on to our home page and then after this list dot builder let me just show you what I meant by giving it a height if I if I just don't give it a height now if I run it you can see that the list view builder is gone why because even if we have given it a horizontal axis called direction direction it needs to be constrained in some height so that's why we were we have given the height property here save it and you can see that the UI is back uh, let's see the UI now we have the album art part done after that we have the text uh, we have two text widgets first one is the track name and then the maybe the album name so what we're gonna do after this container let's give it a text and write gadget here we'll style it maybe size of 28 not shadows size of 28 and then a weight not a bold weight i'll be giving it a font weight of 500 and then the color would be dark primary color where do you have it Return it. so there you go save it and you can see the widget being shown here now you can see that we have some padding here why because we have given it a margin of 40 pixels from vertical axis so that's why we have already had the padding here so after this i'm gonna copy it again the comma and in, you can see that we have both the same text so let's change it uh, now in this case it is the free nationals so let's change it to the free nationals right and for the size it would be 20 and font weight maybe 400 will do save it and looks much better much cooler right now why I'm not adding some padding I'll show you in the end of the video right at the end I'll do something to this columns main axis alignment so that everything will be evenly spaced so let's move on to the our play controls 
okay first we have the slider as you can see in the ui we have the slider first for the slider we have our slider widget it takes up the value so the value will be 10 so what to put a comma here it's a random value i'm taking right now and if on changed it will return the value and we're going to do something with that but right now it will be empty function so let's move on to the min and max value so for the minimum value it will be zero and for the maximum let's give it a maximum value of 20 right now save it and you can see that we have the slider going on it is not changing why because we haven't set anything on on change so let's quickly set it right so inside this home page let's convert it into a stateful widget now why i'm great uh, why am i converting it to stateful widget because i want the state to be changed because whenever i'll be dragging the state will, uh, state will be changing so let's create a double value slider value equals to two let's give it an initial value of two and on this i'm gonna set state that my slider value should become the value that it is returning and for the value part it will be slider value let's restart this app and now you can see that i can move the slider towards the horizontal direction now this slider is by default taking up the primary color what we're gonna do let me just reformat this code first now we're gonna wrap this slider with another widget which is uh, known as slider theme now this slider theme take up data as a parameter and inside this will pass slider theme data now for the slider theme data we have a track height so let's give it a track height of 5 now you can see that we have some bold effect because in the ui also this was a bit bold and for the thumb uh, uh, for your information this is known as thumb so what we're gonna do for the thumb shape i'm gonna give it a property as rounded slider thumb shape right inside this i'm gonna give it an enabled thumb radius of 5 and save it there you go you can see that the thumb radius is reduced and for the color inside this we'll pass the active color as the dark primary color and an active color would be the dark primary color itself but with an opacity of maybe 0.5 or maybe 3 save it and now you can see that our slider is up and running and it's good to go now we have the slider we haven't created any other widget for that right so let's stick with here only now after this slider what do we have we have a row of player controls right so what we can do inside this slip folder create another file and name it as player controls quickly import the material package inside this create a stateless widget player controls now as a child to this container container i'm gonna pass a row two and for the children i'm gonna pass five controls what are these controls this uh, these are yet to be made so let's quickly make controls here only controls are nothing but these containers uh, these containers i have named it as controls so it's your wish how you name the widgets according to your needs or according to your wish uh, let, now let's understand these uh, controls first so you can see that we have our base container of color the primary color which is having some shadows then we have another container overlapping this container which is of color dark primary color and then we have another container overlapping the dark color and inside this container we have our icon as a child to this container i'm gonna pass a stack and two containers one above the others so let's quickly go to our control section and let's give it a height of now one more thing you can see that the height differs for all the containers center container is having different height and the other four containers are having the same height so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna replace this middle controls from here and i'm gonna write play control for this right 
makes sense right the play control is having different dimensions so i'll be using another widget for that so in the middle of this i'll pass play control done makes sense now after that for the height of this con uh, for the height of this container i'm gonna give it a height of 50 and for the width, al width also i'm gonna give it a 50 for the decoration part let's give it a shape of circle so shape would be box shape dot circle and then we have the shadow i'm gonna copy the shadow from the nav bar here so let's just copy it and paste inside this so this time i've copied the shadows from the neighbor item why because the shadows are somewhat similar to the neighbor shadows so let's quickly import the color start dark uh, package so for the container color let me just give it a color of primary and for the icon we need to pass from here because every control is having icon so let's quickly create a constructor so we'll write final icon data icon and quickly create a constructor out of it and for the controls here for the first icon i'll pass icon start what do we have here so it is shuffle and then we have the back icon then the play icon the forward and then we have the what is this this is repeat and this is shovel right so it will be icons dot repeat do we have a repeat icon yes i guess we have a repeat icon yes now the other icon would be previous skip previous and then for the other controls it would be next skip next right so skip next and then we have our shuffle icon there you go make sense and inside this now let's make our container now as a child to this container i'll pass a stack stack takes up children and for the children part i'm gonna give it another container in center i'm gonna pass a container I'll give it a decoration color of dark primary color and shape of circle because this uh, player controls is yet to be declared inside our home page so after that let's just put this and save it now you can see that we have so four circles with dark primary color and uh, Let's just increase the height to 60 maybe. Okay, why the play button is not shown? Because the player control button is still having a empty container right now. An empty container right now. So let's give some height to it. 100 and width will be 100. And let's copy the decoration from below. It will save, uh, it will save some time to us. So I guess now save it and you can see that we have the play control button also. Now after that what we're going to do is for this row I'm going to give it a main axis alignment of space evenly so that all the buttons are evenly spaced and you can see that this container I gave it a, a color of primary color but it is showing the dark primary color why because as a child I passed another container which is having the dark primary color. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a margin of maybe at 8 pixels from all the sides and there you go looks much better much cooler I'm going to just uh, give it a 6 padding that's it cool now after that let's just copy this again and paste it below now this time I'll give it a color of primary and for the padding I'll give it a padding of 10 pixels and there you go you can see that we have created the circular border that we needed now inside this container as a child what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass an icon and the icons would, icon would be the icon that I have passed from above save it 
and there you go you can see that the icon is there now this is taking the entire space so what we're going to do is wrap it center and done now the now the ui is taking shape for us for the player control we're going to do the same thing so let's just copy this tag from here and paste it inside this player control now understand this is the only reason why we created a separate play, uh, play control is just because of the difference in height All right so we'll pass the i can start play play arrow and save it why is it not showing why is it showing error because we have the comma save it and now you can see that we have the icons there so for the size i'm gonna increase it to 50 and for the below icons also i'm gonna give it a size of 30 this time and the color would be dark primary color save it and it looks much cooler for the play also i'm gonna give it a color of dark primary color save it and the ui is now taking up shape now what else do we need to do is that for this let's just decrease the padding to 12 right so now in the UI you can see that for these buttons the shadow is somewhat gray in color and we have some shadow going on for us right now for these buttons you can see that the button is having a border of gray color and there are shadows to this container also so let's quickly add some shadows to it for the uh, these four containers what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a color of gray save it there you go and for this container I'm gonna just give it a same shadow as the below container so just copy it then paste it inside this shadow property save it there you go you can see that we have the shadow effect going on for the for these containers as well now what we're gonna do just say uh, just copy this again and we have to repeat this step for the player got uh, for the player control button as well so inside this decoration as a property to box shadow I'm gonna paste this list so as a property I'm gonna paste this just save it and there you go you can see that we have the shadow effect going on for us we want equal spaces to be given between all the containers so what we're going to do go to your main dot dot file inside your home page as a main access alignment to this column give it space evenly so that every child is evenly spaced there you go you can see that we have equal spacing around all the widgets now we need some padding below this so what we're going to do is after this player controls we're going to give it a sized box and the height would be maybe 100 now looks much cooler much better this is a ui that we aspired and so you can play with the paddings and the you can play with the paddings and the heights so what one last thing i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna increase this size from 16 to 18 or maybe 20 will also work there you go our ui is now complete Hope you like this video hope you enjoy this video hope you learn something from this video and please write in the comments how you feel about this video and please like the video if you learn something from it and share it with your friends too subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and that's it thank you so much for watching this video goodbye